Hey everyone, my name is Julie Davey and I am a neurological physio, but I'm also the founder of MS Good Head Start, which is an innovative six week high intensity interval training and health behaviour education program. MS Australia have asked me just to put a little motivational video out for all those in Australia living with MS at the moment through this really challenging and obviously unprecedented times of how do we live with COVID-19. So this is going to be just a short video just to give you some little motivational things of how you can really enhance the time that we've currently got at the moment even though it is quite different to our normal. So obviously you're going to be doing lots of your physical distancing, some, you know that social isolation, well they're talking social isolation but obviously not socially just physically distancing yourself and a lot of you are going to be spending a lot more time at home okay and confined into your own you know um, immediate people in your house than you have done for a while. So I want to give you a couple of tips and a few things that you can be working on. So when it comes to things like brain health, okay, there is four key things, okay, that you can do for brain health, okay. The first one is exercising three to four times a week, hard enough to get out of breath, okay. So I want to see you <laughs> puffing and panting. Now we're not talking about doing anything really, um, you know, super long walks or things like that. It can be as simple as 20 seconds, of shadow boxing okay so if you if your mobility is confined okay and you are more and um, confined to a wheelchair or very limited of your walking you can get your heart rate up just by doing some boxing okay just sat there just really going for it 20 seconds of boxing 20 seconds rest do that three times if you've got access to something like an exercise bike that's amazing just try and pedal as fast as you can again for like 20 seconds or so and then get your breath back if you are, um, you know, physically good and you can get out walking and even if you can run, things like skipping, like if you've got a skipping rope in the garage, if you did 30 seconds of skipping, whew, that will get your heart rate up. So just think, you know, have a little look at your schedule, your diary, and I do recommend this is a perfect time to be ultimate, you know, really um, optimizing your time. So getting a diary out of the week, when can you be getting that three to four times a week? puffing and panting out of breath. That's number one for your brain health. Number two is learning something new. And what a great time while we're all being more confined to our homes, okay, to really have a little bit of extra time on your hands. But what can you do to challenge your brain? Learning something new is what's gonna help keep those axons in your brain stimulated and going. The human brain's been evolved to learn throughout its lifetime. So I'd say write a list. Now that list could be anything. It could be learn Tai Chi, Pilates, salsa dancing, um, knitting, needlework, wood turning, learning to speak Spanish, learning astrology, you know, learning algebra. It doesn't matter what it is. Write down a list of things that interest you that for years you've always thought, oh, I'd like to know more about that, or I'd like to learn that skill but never have. And then pick a couple that are important, you know, that you think are important to you right now. And can you find online learning for it? It is amazing what you can currently find in this environment around COVID-19 at the moment. So many businesses and practices have had to move to having online content. So if you Google away, I'm sure you're going to find something. You know, for me, I'm trying to learn Spanish at the moment. So half an hour a day, I've got two apps on my phone and I do 15 minutes on each app. I'm just trying to learn some Spanish. It's pretty hard work. And languages are not my uh, forte, but it's just helping to stimulate that brain. Okay. The third one is about social connection. Okay. You've got to keep that brain stimulated by staying socially connected. Yes, we've got to keep our physical distancing for our life at the moment and, you know, lives around us. We've got to try and stop the spread of COVID-19, but definitely stay connected. You know, make sure you're getting on the phone, speaking to friends, families, people regularly, you know, is it, you know, social media chats, whatever it might be, but do make sure you're spending that time to connect with people. And number four, ultimately for brain health is sleep. And what a good time to be trying to actually prioritize and optimize your sleep, okay? So getting good sleep at night is really key. But this also brings me on to another area that I think that during this kind of, you know, reduced ability of getting out and about, 
is maximizing fatigue management, okay? It's one of the hardest things living with MS is, is about trying to manage that real, you know, crippling feelings of fatigue. So the advice I give to um, the clients I work with, you know, it's all about circadian rhythms and scheduling, but most people do boom and bust. They try and do as much as they can in the morning. They work really hard for the day and then they are crashing. Now that crash could be at three o'clock, it could be at four o'clock and then that's it. The key with fatigue management is to rest before you crash. Okay, so I say if your fatigue is pretty good and you're not too worried about it, just take one rest, a 20 minute break around lunchtime. Now, when we're talking about fatigue management, we're looking about trying to switch off your brain activity. So fatigue management is not watching TV, scrolling on your mobile phone, checking emails, reading a book. Fatigue management is no stimulation at all, no visual, no verbal, no auditory. So it's either close your eyes and have a 20 minute power nap, or the one thing that from an auditory point of view that can help is um, guided meditation. So sticking in some headphones or playing on your phone, one of these guided meditation apps. So one 20 minute break a day, okay, if your fatigue isn't bad. If you're really struggling with fatigue, now's your real opportunity to try and take maybe a 20 minute break. Is it about 10 or 11 o'clock, you know, after you've been up for a few hours? And then again, about two or three o'clock. It'll take about three to four weeks of doing that every day till it becomes a habit and also till you see the benefit. And trust me, when you start doing it, nearly every person I work with comes around and goes, oh my God, that does actually make a difference. So as I say, you've got ideal opportunity here, catch up on some sleep, get your fatigue management going. And also let's look about learning something new. Let's do something for brain health. But obviously I'm a physio, so I'm all about exercise. So the final messages I want to leave you with is about that getting out of breath. Okay. So we've got a few things about being physically active and exercise. So if you are relatively unimpaired and say walking, etc., is not an issue for you with your MS, get outside every day for a walk. Okay. So trying to get, you know, I'm trying to get my 10,000 steps in just in my little local area, going out for two or three half hour walks. So, you know, can you kind of schedule in your exercise, get up, get out for a walk, you know, and then you can carry on with the work day that you may need to do from either home or if you're going into work still. So, you know, walking, just generally moving around the garden, moving around the house is awesome, okay? Now, if you can't get out for a walk, make sure you're still getting outside, okay? Get some vitamin D in you, sit out into the garden, sit onto the deck, whatever it might be. Make sure you're getting outside, just kind of keep that brain fresh as well as absorb that vitamin D. But with your exercise, so make sure you're doing something to keep the body moving. You're getting, you're getting out of breath three or four times a week. But give yourself a little challenge, okay? There's a lot of exercise videos and stuff available online. But, you know, is it something simple as you've got a weak right arm? Well, does that mean get hold of a tin of beans and practice? Oh, I can only do two of these. Okay, well, today's two. Let's do two days later. Let's do four, okay? And a couple of days after that, let's get to six. Or even each day, have a go at doing it and try and do one more. My biggest piece of advice, if you are still able to get up out of a chair, is sit to stands, okay? This is a challenge that anyone who is just about able to get up out of a chair, even if you need a bit of an assistance, or you need to push with your arms, and even if you're absolutely fine getting out of a chair, 100 sit to stand challenge okay so first day whatever height you need okay even if you need your hands do as many stand ups as you can until you feel you can't do any more write that number down now for some of you that might only be two for some of you you might get up to 30 or 40 okay so write that number down each day you got to do one to two more than that first day. So write it down, give yourself a goal, give yourself a target. If you can get to a hundred sit to stands a day through this period of time where, you know, a lot of services are having to be pulled back and you're not able to get necessarily the same exercise as normal, 
you could have some pretty strong legs as well as very functional legs to help you get out of chairs and stuff okay so that's the 100 sit to stand challenge okay i give it to you as a bit of a challenge and i hope you can take that on so sit to stand really strengthen those legs but as i say whatever it might be just pick something that you're not so good at let's say it's your handwriting's poor at the moment practice you know write a paragraph a day okay so just take this opportunity that you know the human body is designed to get better okay it's designed to improve if you use it if you don't use it it stays where it is or it gets worse okay if you challenge it and you make it do a little bit more each day than the day before you will get that a little bit better okay so as i said my name's julie davy i am from ms get a head start i've popped our um website address on the bottom here so www.ns-ghs.com please have a look at it and um, you know we've got an uh, international rollout of the program you can get your therapists that you're working with already to become accredited providers of the program and we're also just starting to provide some one-on-one -on -one, um, um, online provision of the program as well so um, please get in touch if you'd like to know more and um, be safe be well and be kind to each other guys it's challenging times for everyone and we will come out of this stronger together um, and as i say really relishing the opportunity to maximize your brain health that sleep that fatigue management and getting into a really good exercise routine without distractions from elsewhere okay it's been a pleasure guys take care bye